How long did it take to design my signature model? Longer than anyone expected. Um, because we kind of went back to first principles with this guitar. There were certain things that Charvel were already doing where I just said, yes, I want that. Um, this neck joint, for instance, is just cool. I can get right up there and not be aware that that block is in the way. And I do spend an unhealthy amount of time up at the top end. Um, or the, the neck profiles, they've been good at that for decades. I didn't have to request anything or modify anything. Other stuff was more difficult. Um, like the pickups were custom made by a mad genius called Michael Frank Brown. And uh, I was just giving him these abstract phrases like, can you make the pick sound more, sorry, the pickup sound more honest? And somehow he knew what I meant. Um, and he later said that making these pickups was a lot easier than making Eric Johnson's pickups, which I could believe. Um, that was my request, because what I should be doing is hooking that around there. So number one, if I step on the cable, the strap will stop it from coming out. But also if I'm sitting down recording somewhere, the cable isn't sticking out there. It just felt ergonomically right to have that. So that's my bit of weirdness. Uh, the dot inlays, laugh if you will. Um, I was taking prototypes around the world with the Stephen Wilson band and I'm told it's a very impressive light show, but when you're on stage trying to play songs, all I really knew was there are certain songs where I have to find the 12th fret in total darkness, or almost total darkness. I'd be kind of going up to the keyboards and trying to use his LED screen to light up the frets a little bit. Um, so I wanted dots that didn't kind of glow in the dark. I just wanted normal dots, but ones that were visible in every conceivable lighting situation, so we came up with this light in the middle and then black ring around the outside kind of thing. Pretty personal stuff. Uh, we experimented with different nuts and again, touring experience taught me that although a self-lubricating kind of Teflon nut is great in theory for tuning stability, if you have to take a guitar on the road for months on end, the D-string will sometimes, it's always the D-string first, will saw its way through the nut slot and after a while, the open D string doesn't sound, it's just buzzing because the, the nut slot is too deep. So I said, let's go back to bone and just try and cut the nut slots really accurately. Um, so tuning stability seems fine. I'll just put a little bit of the unfortunately named nut source in there. And, uh, and it's fine, it's, it's stable. Um, but it lasts longer than uh, the self-lubricating kind. And then the bridge. Where do we start with the bridge? Um, long story, this is a completely fresh bridge. They make them specially for this guitar. Um, we spent ages trying to get the arm attachment right so that it wouldn't clunk at all. So that when you're doing those, you're going So you're not gonna hear any between the down and the up. And it's really good at that. And months later, it's still really good at that. But it took a while to get that right. Um, the profile of the saddles is different, so it doesn't hurt when you lean on them. Uh, the string spacing is different, because I do violent things sometimes with a note, and I don't want the string to fall off the edge. So basically, we went into lots and lots of detail and finally nailed it. It's like, this is the design, it's ready to go. And then the Charvel guys discovered, hey, Guthrie, you should check this out. We just tried roasting some basswood. So instead of the normal basswood body, they tried cooking it in an oxygen-free oven, much as they did with the neck. And they said, we're going to send you a prototype. We think you'll hear a difference in the tone. And lo and behold, I did. So all of that stuff went on. I'm really relieved that we're finally there, and this guitar is actually ready to be released into the wild. I think the Charvel guys are re relieved as well. And I am what is colloquially, colloquially known as a pain in the ass.